for this morning. Hallelujah. Several scriptures, just stay with me. Hallelujah. Probably won't get through all of this this morning. Amen. But we'll do our best to say what the Lord says for today. Amen. And then tomorrow's another day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We'd like to, but we can't tell it all. Amen. Amen. He's just too good. Yes, he is. He, can, I, can I get a witness? He's just too good. Amen. We can't tell all. Amen. Amen. Psalm 68 and 11. God bless you. Psalm 68 and 11. And then a few chapters, a few verses from Luke, Luke 1, all from Luke 1. Luke 1, 19. 24 through 25. 46 through 49. So if you just turn to Luke 1, we'll get you there. Amen. Psalm 68 and 11. Yes. Amen. There, there they go. Luke 19, 1 and 19. 24 through 25, 46 through 49. And the Bible says this in Luke um, Psalm, I'm sorry, Psalm 68, 11. The Lord gave the word, and great was the company of those that published it. Can I say that once again? I want you to get that really in your spirit. The Lord gave the word. And great was the company of those that published it. Amen. And then turn over to Luke 1 and 19. And the angel answering said to him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. Amen. Verse 24, Luke chapter 1. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me. Come on, just touch yourself and say, He's looking on me. Hallelujah. To take away my approach from among men. And then we skip down to verses 46. 47, 48, 49, and Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior, for he hath regarded my low estate. Come on, say that. He hath regarded, regarded my low estate. He's regarded the low estate of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations yes. shall call me blessed. Come on, say that with me. Say, all generations, all generations. shall call me blessed. Oh, yes. For he that is mighty yes. hath done to me great things. Yes. Come on, say that with me. For he, For he that is mighty, yes. come on, touch yourself and say, hath done to me yes. great things. Yes. And holy yes. is his name. Yes. So I'm going to swing way out. Talk this morning a little bit. We're going to swing way out to a different uh, path and we'll come back in. So just stay with me. Is that all right? We're going to talk about some things and address a few things. And it'll all make sense if you stay with me. Is that all right? We love God's scriptures and His word. The word is good all by itself. Amen. We love Him for speaking to us. We'll talk about Mary. We'll talk about Elizabeth. I got a way to go before I get there. I might not get there today, but we'll get through this together. So, so one of the first things that I learned in business school was that if you don't get the word out about your product or your service, just stay with me on this, is that your business will soon fail. Did you hear that? If you don't get the word out. Remember our scripture, Psalm 68 and 11? And the Lord gave the word, and great was the company of those who published it. Right? That was our Old Testament. And then our New Testament talked about Gabriel coming and announcing to Zechariah that he announced to Mary the good tidings of great things to come. The word was spoken, it was communicated, it was broadcasted. All right, so that's the foundation for that. We come back to Psalm 68 and 11, where it says that the Lord gave the word, and great was the company that published it. So 
reminded again as I was in business school, they said, no matter how good of a product or a service that you might have, if you fail to get the word out about that product or yeah. service, your business will fail. Yeah. It will not flourish. It will not come to pass. And so over the last several years, and just give me a few moments and then we'll move on. Amen. Over the past several years, there, there have been to get the word out about different products, services, things that are happening in society. There's the newspaper, the printed press, what we call books, newspapers, and other media that we can print, the printed press, there's television, there's radio. But now the medium of choice is digital. Mm -hmm. In fact, all you hear in corporate America is the term digital transformation. Have, has anyone heard that term, digital transformation? That's, yeah. That is what's taking over the world, not just corporate America. That's the world is being transformed before our very eyes. This is happening. Uh, we'll talk in a minute about where we are in history. And basically, digital transformation um, is converting old means of communication <laughs> into, which was the printed press, into the computerized graphical the digital communication format. That's what's happening throughout society. All the world is transformed from old systems. So, uh, you know, most of the things you, you, you barely even go, you know, get most of your information in the mailbox now. It will come to you. It's not shared in the mailbox. Uh, you still get junk mail. In fact, most of when you go to the mailbox now, if you're like me, it's junk mail, mm -hmm. right? Your real messaging comes to you in other formats. Is that true? Yeah. All right, stay with me. And so the digital transformation that's happening throughout the world uh, is riding on the back of even, like it or not, social media. Mm -hmm. Are y'all still with me? And what is social media? Well, media is Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, so on and so forth. These mediums have replaced the older systems mm -hmm. for communication, getting the word out. And so, frankly, as a church, over this last year, we have embarked upon that path of our own form of digital transformation. Touch your neighbor and say, we're just trying to get the word out. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Amen? And so, you know, I remember taking some courses on PowerPoint presentations. How many of you guys work in PowerPoint? I'm sure you all do some form or another at work. And the trainer basically said that never don't, bad English, but he says it and made his point this way. Are y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You won't judge me for not preaching if I don't holler. Yeah. 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 Oh, is that all right? All right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And so, so the trainer said, never don't, if you want to be an effective communicator, if you want to be an effective teacher, trainer, whatever it is, if it's in the corporate world, if it's a job, if it's in church, in today's world, never don't, it is a double negative, have visual aids. Come on. Right. Never don't have visual aids. Right? Mm -hmm. This is how, how communication is best received in the modern world. Yeah. Now, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to skip them and come back. You know, so in the birth of the Savior, he said, I'm going to give the whole world a digital aid. I got you. I'm going to star in the east. Come on. I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm going to star in the east. I'm going to give you a sign to go along with what I'm telling you so that you get my point. Somebody give God praise. You understand what I'm saying? Never don't have visual aid. So, whatever it is, if you teach the class, if you give it a session, and uh, then it's most effective for the modern audience if you have some way of visualizing it from today, right? Mm -hmm. From, from I, I, we, we had a great party at the house Friday night, and we had some little kids there, party with Caitlin at graduation, and little kids, and nothing, you know, would slow these kids down. They were just, I don't know if they were going red Kool-Aid or whatever. <laughs> But it couldn't slow them down. And so we decided that we got a couple of iPads out and some earphones and gave it to these kids. I mean, little kids. And these kids said, quiet. 
totally engaged and they knew how to dial up their own Disney.com or whatever they went to. Uh, little, right? So now we have a generation that has been born receiving information this way, right? You know, for us, the modern computer came in about the mid 90s, right? And so for the last, that's how many years ago? 30 years ago? Touch your neighbor and say, you get old. You know? <laughs> 30 years ago is when, and I'm, I'm going to tell you when this began to take hold. It's when Microsoft came out with Windows 95. That was their first graphical based operating system. Before then, it was DOS. Right. And DOS was a command line. Mm -hmm. You type out a command on a black screen. Y'all remember the old video games? Yeah. 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 What's up? What's up? I was over Pac Man. You used to have a dot. Uh, yeah. And your friend had a line. And you have a line, and you push that little dot back and forth. Y'all remember that old game? The Nintendo, okay. You see, we, we kind of aging ourselves, baby. Y'all kind of act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, you know. All right? So since 95, Windows 95 came out with that first graphical uh, user interface for the operating system, the world has transformed. And now generations of kids, right? Our uh, young adults. Where we we have had to retrain ourselves and learn these things. They grew up with it naturally, right? Right. The iPad is the new pencil, right? It's the new pencil, and so then businesses know this, right? And so to reach this generation, right, all over the world, digital transformation is taking place, right? Digital transformation is taking place. And so then, you know, that's digital transformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're going to get a nice digital monitor. I, you know, they'll tell you how, you know, I've been taking out something my kids like, Dad, you work with computers. How come you don't know how to work with iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even care. I just want my own flip phone. <laughs> All right. But I mentioned last Sunday to one of the brothers, like, yeah, I said, we're going to get us a screen. And, and, and I said, I announced it at church, we're going to get us a screen. And then when they put that up, we're going to have a light and everything. This is not a we don't need no screen. We need a digital monitor. So, like, you don't know. Two of them. Two of them. That's right. We right. got to have one over here, and then one somewhere else. Like, right. So, yeah. so, so, but that is what? That's digital transformation. <laughs> right? We're not leaving God because of that. Right? It's just how what information <coughs> is received in this time frame that we live in. Now, go back to the scripture, right? God used visual aids, uh -huh. and he used the stars and the sky. Uh -huh. Because that's what they were what used to. That's right. Come on, give God praise. You're getting the point. Yeah. You're getting the point. Yeah. And so what does yeah. Jesus say? What does Jesus say? Just give me a few more minutes. What does Jesus say? Luke 14 and 23, Jesus gives a parable. I'm not going to get all the way to where I want to today, but this thing, maybe I can just prime the pump a little bit. Maybe I can well, whet your appetite that you'll come back next Sunday and get the rest of it. All right? Jesus says in Luke 14 23, Jesus says this. Uh, he was given a parable. There was a great man who made a great feast. And he invited all his friends and family, co workers, everybody to this great feast to come. And uh, the servants came, they went out. Invited everybody they could. Then the servants came back to the house and said, we still have empty seats at the table. People just aren't coming. People are not coming. And so give, give, then, then what did that great man do? He said, I, here's what I want you to do. Since I invited those I know, my friends, my family, those who I'm familiar with, and they didn't come to the feast, I want you to go out to the hedges, uh -huh. the highway, and the byways, and what? <laughs> and compel them, them to come. What are the hedges of highway? Non ordinary, non traditional, abnormal methods and ways of reaching people because doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, is what? Insanity. And so that's what we have to do. That's what the hedges and the highways. Yeah. Listen, 
I'm not saying we can't do this. Are y'all still with me? Yes. Uh, how, how many lost your north today? Are you still with me? Yes. I'm, not, I'm not saying that we can't go out and pass out tracks and knock on doors like people used to do. Whenever we said that when I was growing up, when I was in YPWW. Uh -huh. Y'all know what YPWW uh -huh. is. Uh -huh. Young people really work us. Yeah. You met Sunday afternoon at 6. Yeah. When you had Sunday school at 10. Uh -huh. No, earlier than that. <laughs> then you had regular morning service. And then you had YPWW at 6. And then you had evening service at 7 o'clock. Right. Evening service is RHOA. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. <laughs> For this generation. Y'all know what it is. We're a housewife of Atlanta. That's the <laughs> service there, right? Back in the day, we were in church all day. Mm. All day. On Sunday, you were in church all day. And Friday night was what? Joy and Jubilee night. Y'all don't know nothing about that. <laughs> Thursday night was choir practice. We got a break Wednesday. Uh, when, uh, but Tuesday night was Bible study. We had Tuesday night Bible study back then. You, you really, the only day you got off was Monday. And Saturday, you was at the church cleaning the church. Mm -hmm. Tell you that you don't know church. Y'all don't know church. Don't know church. <laughs> that was week in and week out. Huh? It won't, it won't know, uh, it won't know schedule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I won't, I won't schedule this week, that. It won't know everybody had to show up. Yeah. Huh? He got hotly rebuked if he did. Amen. I'll leave that alone. <laughs> That's down for a new thing. You got to pray for a new <laughs> But my point is this, when they preached about go to the hedges, the highways, the byways, and compel men, that for us, that means get a track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Even go early, early today, it's called a prayer band. Y'all know nothing about that. Mm -hmm. And you go knock on doors and you pass out tracks, right, to reach people. Well, guess what? Um, um, unless there's some uh, different circumstances, I'm not saying we can't do one-on-one. -on -one. That's that reaches people today. Are y'all still with me? Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily the hedges, mm -hmm. the highways, mm -hmm. and the byways of the 21st century. The 21st century has become digitized. Mm -hmm. And if the church, and I'm not saying we can't do that because we will outreach, we will go out, mm -hmm. we will cast out flyers, because nothing, nothing replaces face-to-face -face contact. But the majority of what we have to do is adapt to the generation that we live in and use the mediums that are present today to get the word out. The Lord gave the word, but great was the company that published it. The word comes from God, but it is our responsibility to get the word out, to publish it, and we must understand the times in which we live. Are you with me? Yeah. So I think God prays on this. Let me tell you this. 1450 was the invention. They call it the Gutenberg Bible. Gutenberg, Johannes Gutenberg invented what's, what's mostly accepted today as the modern printing press. The Gutenberg Bible. Okay? Before the, the first Bible was printed, major Bible printed in 1450 by a German named Johannes Gutenberg in Wiesbaden, Germany, Mainz, Germany area. The average cost of a Bible was $35,000 in that day before the printing press, before the Gutenberg Bible. Why did it cost so much? Because scribes and scholars had to first know how to read Latin, then interpret that, and then write that into a huge book of parchments. Mm. That was that's why it cost so much in that time. So commoners like you and me could not read the Bible. They depended upon the priest in the synagogue to go to church and have the Bible interpreted for them. Every, everyday people like us, the rich, the poor, could not read. The poor did not have access to the Bible. Did you know that? We take so much for granted, don't we? Yes. But after the printing press, then the 
we, we have this age of, 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 of uh, industrialization. I, I, I told you I was going to swing out wide, but I'm going to bring it back. We have this age of industrialization, and uh, it's that law of mass production, right? Yeah. The more you mass produce something, then the cost drives down, right? And so then as the Bibles were mass produced, the paper became normal, then for regular people, I mean, centuries later, we all can have a copy of the Bible that sits on our shelf most of the time now. The speed of transformation and modernization is moved beyond just having a personal printing. It's moved to the point that at light speed, if I can digitize information at light speed, it gets out much quicker and faster to a very, a very audiences, uh, not just in one geography, but every geography. It's just technology. It's just technology. Are you still with me? Yes. And so then we are in the middle of one of history's most phenomenal uh, ages. There are three eras. We, many are calling this the third industrial revolution. Are y'all staying with me? Yes, yes, sir. Am I making sense? Yes, yes sir. sir. We're, run, we're, we're in the midst of one of history's, many call it the third industrial revolution. The first industrial revolution was the age of uh, mechanization. It's when we move people, society moves from the farm and tractors mm -hmm. were invented. And after tractors were invented, you had mass production of food. It used to be that you only ate what you farmed. Mm -hmm. But then after the tractor and mechanical machinery were produced, then you could you had a certain set of society that had the equipment and they were the farmers, right? Mm -hmm. And then they produced mass and then paid them, and then you had a supply of what you needed to eat. The first industrial revolution was mechanization. The second industrial revolution was really, again, more industry. It's like we had factories. We mass-produced materials and goods and clothes and things. That was in the mid-1800s when it happened. Well, now we're at a phenomenal, I don't want you to miss this, a, a phenomenal time in history being called the third industrial revolution. Remember, society uh, changed on, on these major shifts. It used to be that everybody was a farmer. Everybody had their own vegetables, sheep, and things like that. But then when tractors were invented and we had mechanization, then society shifted. We moved from rural areas to urban areas, right? And then with the industrialization, we had smiths before that, and craftsmen. But when industrialization came into being, we went from being smiths, craftsmen, to being uh, workers for a company, mm -hmm. uh, a corporation. And we went to the factory to get our jobs in the, the mid 1800s up until, up until now. And so, in this age, the third industrial revolution is the age of the internet. And the age of the internet and digitalization has phenomenally changed. Someone quoted a, a fact there is more information shared in the last two years. Then all history combined wow. because of the internet. And for the church to be in a quiet, peaceful yes. cocoon yes. like it doesn't exist yes. and continue to operate like we always operate, yes. thinking the world is going to flip back mm -hmm. to what it was. Mm -hmm. We risk being irrelevant and what did I tell you what they told us about about uh, a company that doesn't get the word out about its product, eventually it fails. Now, the Bible says, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'm not talking about the church. I'm just talking about your church. <laughs> Such a name to say, neighbor, if you don't get it, we don't get with it. Our church will fail. Our but the church won't. You don't need to get a lot of praise on that. Are you with me? Yes, sir. I, did I swing out real far? I told you I was going to swing out far. But it's for a point. It's for a point to say that we have to adapt to remain relevant. That's right. Come on, touch your neighbor and say that. We gotta have to adapt. We gotta adapt to remain relevant. And don't tell me we don't. Don't tell me we don't. They people back in the day rejected Thomas Dorsey. Huh? Y'all know who Thomas Dorsey is? 
sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. He brought the influence. They said that little devil music. Devil music. The influence of jazz and the blues into church hymns. He precious Lord, take my hand. He brought the R and B, and churches went all through gyrations where you bring drums and guitars in the church. Then you don't have all that juke joint up in the church. Y'all gonna talk to me? Y'all, you got y'all that word? I say juke joint. And it was a. I remember growing up in the 70s mm -hmm. when you had the Hawkins. Y'all remember that era? Yes. yes. And they started singing Oh Happy Day and you had half the church. No, nah, I'm singing with Precious Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm singing with Precious Lord. Well, back in that day, Precious Lord was a stretch. Because then nobody bring the influence of, of jazz and, 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 and blues, so to speak. Of course, well, that was the music we created. Yeah, how's, how's the stuff that we create get demonized? I, that, that's another story. Yes. Why is it demonized? Because that's it was right. a black origin. I don't know why you tell me that. But then, so how? Huh? Come on here. All right now. But so so you had that era, and then you had the Hawkins era. That's when I came along with the oh. 70s. And then it was the outfits when the Hawkins came up with the glow out curve. Oh, yeah. 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 And we had that silk shirt with the butterfly collar <laughs> <laughs> and singing in stacks. <laughs> Y'all remember that in the set? Yeah. yeah. And the and half the half the Pentecostal church. Oh, that's the devil coming to that church. Uh -huh. And now we don't even think nothing of it. We we come to church and it ain't no keyboard. I ain't coming to church. Yeah. That's the way we are now. The music ain't right. Don't even come. That's right. But back in the day when they started bringing keyboards in the church, Lord, the devil, you're letting the devil in the church. <laughs> Y'all hear me? What I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Tell you, baby, it's just technology. It's just yeah. technology. But we now the essence of who we are, of what God is, of who God is, still has to. That will never change. That will never change. And so that's Psalm 68 and 11. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company that published it. The publishing is what we have issues with. That's right. Not the word itself. That's right. It's the publishing of it that's that we're stumbling on. Oh, yes. oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. The, title, the title of the sermon is Published or Perish. My God. Oh, my God. The title of it is Published or Perish. If we don't adapt to get the word out for this generation, it's published or perish. It's published or perish. It's published or perish. It's published. We'll be up in here by ourselves. I grew up on that. I grew up in church that way. That's what I grew up in. There, there was no order of service on Sunday morning. Right. You came in. Right. Somebody prayed. Right. You had about 15 testimonies. Yeah. Uh -oh. Did I say 15 testimonies? Yeah. 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 At least. Yeah. And all I won't tell another Lord is goodness. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so be, I, I got to move on. And, and then, then the our preacher got up and, and they spoke. And we prayed. They had to fire now. Mm -hmm. But I know the church that didn't change. Saying, still love the Lord. Mm -hmm. They died in faith. You know? yes. And all the effort, all the effort, men got out of work, came to the church house and built the church mm -hmm. from their hands to the, from the ground up. Mothers prayed. You ate at church all day on Sunday because mothers cook. Didn't nobody have to get no schedule That's or right. no thing. The mother, baby, I make the biscuits, you get the potato salad. You do. We had service, all that work. It wasn't in vain. I'm not going to say that. But that church, as sincere, as God fearing, as God loving as they are and were, that church has ceased. All but cease to exist. Why? Was the word wrong? No. Was prayer wrong? No. Were the people not dedicated? Wasn't that either. Were the people not faithful? Wasn't that either. 
they did adjust to the times in which they live. Does the neighbor say publish or perish? Publish or perish. And so what we have to do, one of the greatest, the best things, I got to finish this, we'll continue the song, maybe in past Christmas. One of the great, great things that you have to learn best as a preacher is not just how to preach. You have to learn over time what not to do. That's right. I have watched enough. I have watched enough in my life yes, sir. to know what not to do. Yes, sir. And one thing I ain't, can I say that? Ain't? Yeah. Yeah. One thing I ain't going to do, I ain't going to not change. A lot of things were negative. <laughs> Lots of that Y'all get that? Yeah. I ain't going not change. Because I see where it gets. Because I was given, and you were given a mandate to publish. You don't have to wait. Why? Or perish. Are y'all with me? Give my praise on that. Give it, give it. So this almost brings us to the point, and then my, and then I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to be dismissed. The point of it is, when God got ready to change the planet with the birth yes, of His Son, before the Son was born, He started a movement for us. Uh -huh. <laughs> before every great move in society. The prerequisite, it began with communication. Amen. People had to start talking. Anticipation and expectation had to be raised. We're in the season of Advent. That's the liturgical season of the church. It's the season of expectation and waiting. Right? Waiting for the Christ to come. God says, listen, I know how to tell the world that my son is coming. I'm not going to have him born and quiet. I'm going to touch the name and say we got to get the word out. Get the word out. I'm not going to have him born quiet, quietly in a manger. I'm going to call the stir. That's what the Lord says. Huh? And the Lord began to call the stir. stir. And he did, I call it the, the, the three C's of Christmas. Hold on, I move the three C's of Christmas off. Uh, controversy, conflict, and confusion. Come on now. <laughs> The three seeds of Christmas. What are you talking about? I'm going to let a virgin girl have a baby. And everybody going to start talking about it. Mm. Everybody going to question who the daddy is. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. That's Christmas. I know you got this nice little story about Christmas. But that's what God did. All right. I'm going to start a controversy. What's that show? They come on on the weekdays. They take all those tests. Maury. I'm going to start <laughs> Come on, stay with me. I'm gonna start a huge controversy. And the way I the best way I know to get word out in humanity is start a controversy. Mm. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Let's give God praise. I'm gonna leave you alone here. I'm gonna start a controversy. You wanna get a word out? Listen, let me can I go beyond controversy? Uh -huh. I'm not saying that God did this, but he knows human nature. That's right. The best way to get a word out is start some juicy gossip. That's right. That's right. Hello? That's right. Well, I ain't saying that God did that. That's what, that was man's reaction. But he knew to get the word out, it would have to be through conflict, controversy, confusion, conflict. Huh? And everybody started talking about, is this how can she be having a baby? Is she pregnant now? They can say the end of that betrothal period. What's, what's happening? What's, 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 what's Joseph going to do? Read John 8 and 41, if you don't believe me. John 8 and 41. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees about my father. And the Pharisees, in an in a, in a undermining comment, said that to Jesus. He said, God is our father, is but one. We were not born of fornication. Mm. Mm. That's what they said about Jesus. In other words, this is this man is 33 years old. And the Pharisees, the religious, are still debating his birth 
They said, we're not, we were not born. We knew who our father is. We weren't born of fornication. That's a sign that Jesus said 33 years later, we still don't believe that Joseph is your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Read that. And God knew wow. that in humanity to get the word out, oh, you start some controversy, some conflict, people gonna talk. That's why you gotta stop bemoaning. I feel like preaching. What people, what people say about you. God's just using the controversy. Lord have mercy to get a word out about your miracle. Give God some praise and yeah. Tell your neighbor God getting ready to use my controversy. <laughs> Come on, give God some praise. Yeah. They don't guess what is what they said about you true? Is it anything to this? Is this real? He says God using the controversy. Yes, sir. He's gonna use the doubts and the haters to bless you. I got to finish, and he used the conflict. Can you imagine the conflict between Joseph and Mary? Come on, let's, let's, let's go to another dynamic. The Bible says he was a just man, so he didn't want to make a public uh, knowledge of... I don't know how she got pregnant. <laughs> can, I, <laughs> can I just talk? I'm, not, I'm, I'm, being, I'm still being... I'm still keeping it above all. I, I love her, and I thought every day was good. <laughs> can you imagine that? <laughs> I'm just divorcing it from a man's point of view. That's how a brother would feel yeah. if this happened in a relationship. Come here, <laughs> Can you imagine how he felt? Huh? I love you, but I, I can't do nothing with this. I can't compete with this. That's how a man would feel. Can you imagine the dialogue? And she said, Baby, well, it was the Lord. <laughs> Baby, well, it was the Lord. Right, yeah. <laughs> Listen, we just part ways. I tried. I don't know where, you know, then you're going into the internal conflict. I don't know where I fell down on this. I don't know, where, all right, you know, you could have told me. <laughs> Am I making it real? Yes. Can you imagine that? The anguish? This is what happened, y'all. This is in your Bible. Yeah. Huh? Can you imagine the conflict? And then the confusion. I don't, I don't know if he had some boys. The Bible don't give us all the deal. Yeah, he had to. Hey, you still gonna marry her? You still gonna marry her? Can I talk? Am I talking right? Yeah. Can you imagine? And all of this was planned for one cause, mm. to get the word out about the Savior yes. coming to the earth. Mm -hmm. And God used the frailty of humanity to communicate this in the most powerful way. He used every means necessary to get the word out. Come on, give God praise in the yes. Come on. That's why I don't let this bother me. You don't get this old, dilapidated building no. and put a church in it. It's going to cost you more money to fix it than if you build a church from the ground up. Keep talking. Keep talking. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Give God some praise in here. I want you to help me get the word out. Because one day we're going to ride by here. Yes, sir. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. It's going to look better than the buildings in downtown. Give God some praise. And the same folk that was talking. That's right. Y'all ain't going to help me here. The same folk that was talking. Give me up in here. Gonna help me get the word out. That's it. That's you right. see what they did with that? Right. I remember that. I'm going to that church. Y'all don't talk to me. Take your name. I'm just trying to get the word out. Just trying to get the word out. We have to. I got to conclude. We have to adapt. We have to adapt. And I'm not finished. We're going to come back to this. We have to adapt. Can I say it again? 
We have to. But Dad, I they, they preach. I preached last Sunday. They, and I think the first day they put my picture up there. I, I was sitting there in that seat. I said, "Well, I like that right there." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really had this conversation with my head. I should we put the Lord up there? <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that in my mind. Should we put the Lord up there? When I said, well, what does the Lord look what like? Am I going to put black Jesus or black Jesus? <laughs> well, I thought about this before I met the pulpit. <laughs> but, you know, what I can talk I can do is point it back to him. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 But all of that, all that we're doing is trying to reach this yeah. generation yeah. that was born on the backs of Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's where church is today. Mm -hmm. Folk don't even go to church now. Yes, yeah. yep. Folk go to church on YouTube. That's, That's, right. Right. That's, right. That's true. Amen. That's right. And we'll back check your son. <laughs> Off of YouTube and replay it and replay it and replay it and replay it to that that and they go look that up. That's how convenient yes. information is yes. to us now. Yes. So us who endeavor to still hold church, church has to be all the more impactful. Yes. All the more impactful. We don't have time to play. We don't have time to have an off Sunday. We don't have a time to come in here and God in here with us. Yes. And we're not using every means necessary to touch for those moments. Amen. Many people can. All right, God bless you. Give it praise. I'm done. I'm done. Right. Let's stand to our feet. Let's pray.